Hey friends, welcome back to my channel. My name is Heather and this is Create Your Own Cozy. On today's video, I am using three of the new Iron Orchid Design release items. If you want to see what I come up with, stick around. For the first three projects in today's video, I'm going to use the new IOD stamp pastiche. Guys, this tall bird cage might just be my favorite. They've got bird cages and cloches and birds and flowers and books and eggs and beetles. And then look at the masks. The masks have the stamps on them too, so you can plan out your piece. Let's go ahead and get started with project number one. I grabbed this a while back. I'm still working through my stash, guys. I paid $2.99 for it. Decided to go with the color Aviary DIY. It's a nice, beautiful green color. And I did two solid coats with Aviary and then I wet distressed it. After that, I got out IOD ink for the very first time. I, my local stockist never stocked this, so I never grabbed any. And it is my first time using it. I'm just basically taking the blank container and adding some black ink to it. And I was like, oh my goodness, this barely took up any. This is going to last forever. Now I see why it costs more than the stays on ink that I used to get from Hobby Lobby. And I know this is a much better product and value in the end. So I am just laying my stuff out. And first thing I'm gonna do is stamp on this cute little bird. And I am going to do the stamp paint stamp technique. I just love this technique. You stamp it on, it's basically like, the um, lines you need to color in and then you paint over that and when that is dry you stamp back over the top of it you kind of hover it be very careful with your second stamp so that you get your your picture lined up but it's not your paint does not have to be perfection that's kind of the beauty of it it's kind of coloring within the lines kind of just like i don't know it just has such a cool look i love it so much so I was careful, I re-stamped it, and then since the bird is sitting inside of the cage, I can just put the cage over the top of the bird. There's no need for a mask with this one. And as you can see, I'm making a little mess. I make sure I clean that up before I stamp it. Then I top coat it so everything is sealed in. And guys, adding some ribbon from the Dollar Tree, and I think this one is totally a keeper and is one of my favorite stamps in this whole set. Look how tall and beautiful it is. Project number two this week is a challenge my friend Jen brought to me at dinner the other night. She loves tea. She knows how much I love to make over a box. So I said, bring it on. I'm not thrifting, but it's been hard to say no to free stuff. So the inside was not in the best shape and it had some paper on the bottom. First thing I was going to do is kind of heat up the glue and get that removed. I was going to try to keep the inside, but after getting a little wet, it just kind of crumbled. So I took that out. I want to know what kind of glue they use for this little 
fake wood applique it took a while to get off but i finally got it with this little razor and i kind of sanded the paper and decided i was going to use some air dry clay over this so it wasn't looking for perfection got this tip from erin over at the provincial farmhouse guys if you guys don't watch her she is one of my favorite creators on YouTube right now. She is from Australia. Her voice is so calm and soothing and she just has the best ideas. Anyway, her idea was to use one of these little plastic things, put some cornstarch on it and um, lay or roll out your clay. And I decided to try to use the stamps inside the clay on this one. So the first thing I was gonna do is glue the clay onto the box with type on glue made sure I got it all the way to the edges while I want it to look like rough and like it's coming up. I didn't want it to actually come up. So I made sure I got all the edges down. After getting it on the piece, that's when I decided to stamp it. I just thought that was the best order of operation for this particular one. I just put the stamp inside of here and made an impression in the clay don't forget you can do this with your stamps guys they can make impressions it's just another option and then i grabbed the little butterfly for the inside i did two coats of vintage linen and you can see it covered up this this uh, pattern pretty well i did sand the edges since this was a paper but the paper was sticking so well that I just left it on there and painted over the top. I decided to stipple the second coat of vintage linen on here to make it look like it has a leathery type effect. At this point, I didn't know whether I was gonna add wax or like a paint wash or a glaze over it, but I knew I wanted some texture added to cover that it was paper prior. Next, I'm going to put a stamp inside the impression within the clay so that it stands out a little bit more. Requires a little bit of wiping down. Been very messy with this thing, but a little um, wet wipe and you can wipe it right up. I did an impression on the inside and then it was time to come up with a color combination. I painted the bottom and the inside aviary and couldn't quite come up with an, a combination I wanted on the outside and ended up going with petticoat pink. I sealed the white paint so that when I put the petticoat pink over it, I could just wet distress it and some of that white would come back through. I was wanting some of those textured areas to be the areas where the pink would wipe back. So after I got a two-tone look by wet distressing some of the pink back, I decided I was going to do a dark wax. And I'm like, you know what? This is kind of precious. I don't want to muddy it up. I got out Golden Ticket. Originally, I was just going to kind of put it inside of the butterfly and maybe wipe it back. And then I decided, you know what? Liquid Patina is a top coat and it can be used like a little glaze. Why don't I just... I don't know, have a little golden glaze throughout this whole project. And it kind of just morphed from there. And you can see once I get this on here, it's giving me that leathery look that I liked um, with just a little bit of golden shimmer and didn't muddy this at all. So I made sure I got this gold down in the crevices and didn't wipe that back too much. So it was kind of a little extra up here. But I really like how this finished up and then I ended up stamping the butterfly and then putting gold over that again. So this next one was in my youngest daughter's room and she finally said, mom, I think um, this one's done. She um, colored it in with lipstick and makeup and the she was fine with that for a while, but when the rope finally broke, she's like, mom, I think this might be 
done. So I was like, okay, well, let me see if I can upcycle it. So I'm using some Clorox wipes to get the lipstick off. Originally, I was gonna try to use a music sheet, but the music didn't go, quite go to the edges. So I grabbed an old book that we got from Brett's grandmother about prayer. It was much more yellow in the pages, but I just kind of went with it. I had the ripped pages kind of meet in the middle to make it more of a mixed media looking background. And then I decoupage the paper on here with liquid patina and you can use that on a book page, but you are gonna need to go a lot thicker with the liquid patina. You're gonna have to really pay attention to the edges because they tend to curl because this is a book and it's not exactly what it was made for, but my goodness, you can make some beautiful art out of some old book pages. Let it dry a complete 24 hours before using this little sander to just go down the edge and rip off the paper. Next, I'm gonna set up my beautiful stamping and I am gonna use some masks for this one. And I can't wait to show you the fun little surprise that I didn't even know was happened on this particular one. So I am putting the, when you're using masks, you wanna do your front stamp first, the one that is closest to you in the picture. And I wish I would have gone a little bit higher with this, but it is what it is. I'm just keeping my hand on here, making sure it is a great impression. And look at that. Ugh, these bird cages are so gorgeous. I make sure I clean off my stamps right away. And then I realized, look guys, the, like, the little bottoms come off of each of these, which means that you can kind of layer these particular stamps. If you wanna add some height, you can use the bottom of one and put a mask on the top of the other one so that it, it stamps correctly. So I am putting the mask of the one I've already stamped and then the mask of the one I'm using so that when I put this on here, the only thing that's going to stamp is that little bottom section. And I like to use my plastic and put it down in the corner so that when I turn it over, it's exactly, whoops, I didn't clean that one very well yet. I had used it on the clay, so it was a little dusty. But look, do you see how you can kind of like add these layers? So cool, this is a cool component of these masks that they, they also come apart so you can mix and match the different parts you wanna use. So now as I'm layering, I am putting stuff behind this front birdhouse. So I make sure I mask the front birdhouse up. Lay out what is gonna go behind it. I put the little plastic on the square right there so that I it's, it's placed where I want it to go. And then since I had already decided where the corner of it is, it's already spaced correctly. That is a very good habit to get into, to do your spacing put your plastic sheet on and then pick it up. That way you're not worried once the ink is on there that it's in the right spot. Look at this layering process, it was so fun. And then I went and added a little label from the conservatory label. I figured I fit, I realized that it was kind of missing something up at the top. So I just kind of added that up at the top. What do you guys think of this one? I think it is so precious. I painted the back black and I did the sides and then I intentionally let some of the black come up over the top to make it look a lot older. This is a fun little shelf sitter to make awesome vignettes. What do you guys think? So I knew Jen was bringing me the little box and she said, this is a surprise. Can you make this look totally different? And I'm like, guys, it's a mug. Let's see what I can do. 
So I got out this mold, invitation only. Oh my gosh, I love these. I can see that deer for Christmas, that bulldog for my husband. Um, hi, George Bulldogs. But for today, I'm gonna use this little Miss Pris cat. That's what I've named her in my head, Miss Pris. Just putting some cornstarch in there, some IOD air dry clay. Guys, I just have so many ideas in my head for these. Today, I'm gonna do a monochromatic look, but I've seen some amazing uses of this from the other artists and stockists out there where they're painting them on all individually. I can just see a green sack stripe behind them. Oh, I just think these are gonna be so much fun. So I am rolling the mold, not the clay coming out of the mold to try to protect it. And here Miss Pris is. So I get out the mug and I do some type on quick and thick and I know a number of you have said that they appreciate that I show the mistakes and I joke around saying I'm gonna keep on showing mistakes. Well, <laughs> guys, for some reason, I, I let this thing dry overnight and for some reason I, reason I sat the mug up and <laughs> it's it slid. It slid as it dried overnight. I wasn't even thinking like lay it on its back, let it dry in its back. Look what happened, look. I'm like, do I put a scarf on them? No, let's just, I used to take pottery. Let's take some more clay and just kind of rub it in. And any of the places that I don't really like, just kind of fix that with the clay. That's the beauty of using clay. So after that is dry, I go over this whole mug with two coats of petticoat pink and I'm stippling it on just like I did the other project. I felt like it went really well with that rose color and I did not want to paint the inside thinking this would be a really cute vase for like fresh cut flowers like with the little Miss Pris on it. Maybe I should stamp Miss Pris on the side. Hmm. Let me know in the comments below. I did not do it for this project but that could be this could be a fun little vase for when you get fresh cut flowers out of your spring yard and you can actually put the water on the inside. Two coats, stippled. I went over it with Big Top, and then I am doing the same idea that I did for the other project. I was like, you know what? Let's try this like little gold wash again. So I went over it with Golden Ticket, trying to get it in all the little crevices right here. I did not like like I wanted Miss Pris to be a little bit more golden. So I got out golden rule and used that little gilding wax just on my finger to go over Miss Pris so she stood out a little bit more. Now, when I texted Jen and Tara, the final results, Jen said she didn't even recognize it. So I guess mission accomplished. Um, I don't know, I this is probably not what she was expecting as an end result, a little Miss Pris kit, kitten. But um, I think she is a spunky little thing and I would love to get some fresh cut flowers in here. What do you guys think? For my fifth and final project today, I am using scraps from my basement. This frame is from the hutch that my paint is displayed in in my booth. I have three other ones of these, so I thought, why not use this for something? And then I did a video where I installed this wall and had a bunch of scrap pieces and in order to use the scrap pieces, I had to cut them to size up and down. I didn't have them long enough to go um, horizontal, but it totally worked. They were already stained. I used wood glue overnight. Some of them popped out, so I am hot glue, wood gluing and then hot gluing so that I can get this project done today. And then you'll see in the center, there is one piece of wood that I had to cut 
um, vertically so that it would fit and um, you can't even really tell that it's there once I get the transfer on the top of it. So this is a pre-finished wood, but it has a raw feel to it. So I did go over this with liquid patina so that it would be sealed in and I would have more chance of the transfer sticking well. So this transfer is one of the new releases. It is so popular. I've ordered some new um, stock that should be getting here on Monday, but it is beautiful, guys. There are eight sheets. You could use them all together on a piece of furniture, which was my plan. But you know what? I decided to make something small because you know what? I know someone where I could get another one of these. That's the beauty of a transfer, right? So this is so beautiful. I'm just using the top portion of the transfer. So I will still have the bottom portion for a different project. You can mix and match. The seams have like a wavy space to it so that you can match that up. So I'm centering it in the middle and then I will add these little side pieces but not use the entire thing. So I'm going to cut them to size. That's a great part about this grid line. You can cut them to size and kind of get it in the space. Make sure you're lining up well. And then I'm gonna use the transfer tool that comes with the transfer pack. And then one of the tips is to really make sure that your top coat is all the way dry. I'm going to take out this portion. And because I have these wooden boards that are not laying flat, I am doing this. It reminds me a lot of my wallpaper project where I am getting one section on and then peeling it back from the underneath part. I just wanted to make sure that the picture stayed um, true to the picture as it went from board to board. And it really worked and it did remind me of wallpapering. So the peel and stick wallpaper is very much like a transfer to me at that you're just getting it on there and um, rolling the back so I'm lining it up. This transfer has the most gorgeous colors and it has like a crackly age look to it, which I think worked really well with these slats. Um, where the boards were not laying flat, I kind of just pushed down and let the transfer naturally have a break. What do you guys think of this? Oh my gosh, these colors are getting me, guys. So what did you guys think? Guys, today I am living, this week, I am living life on the edge. It is like 2.15 on Friday right now. I normally get my videos done Wednesday night, Thursday morning at the latest. That's what I feel comfortable with. But my third grader comes home in like 10 minutes. 
So I have like 10 more minutes of quiet around here. Oh my gosh. There's a little bit of adrenaline because, ah, kind of like the adrenaline for my live last week. Can you believe I did a live on the Iron Orchid release day on Facebook? Oh, I was terrified of it, but I did it anyway. Anyway, what did you guys think of today's projects? I really had fun with the, with the pastiche stamps. Um, gosh, I think they are going to be one of my favorites. Let me know in the comments below what your favorite project was. Let me know what your favorite release item has been so far. If you have ordered from me, my um, second shipment has taken a little bit to get here. I guess they were like overloaded with second shipments. So that is gonna get here on Monday. So if you have any items that you ordered or back ordered for me, your orders are out of my dining table. The second I get that order, I am gonna get your stuff out. Also, um, I just wanted to say thank you so much. I had no idea I was gonna get such support from you guys. I had great support in person in my store, but the support online on my website has been amazing. And I just wanted to say thank you so much from the bottom of my heart for helping to continue or helping support this IOD stockish dream that I've had and for supporting me and my family. I just wanted to say thank you. Next week, we have something really exciting coming. JRV has six new cottage colors. Um, I already have three favorites. Three of the six are my new favorites. It was so hard not to use these colors in my video today, but I held back. Um, I'm going to show off some of those new colors next week. Um, and just so you know, um, April 1st, the DIY paint, Debbie's DIY paint is going to have a small price increase. We have not had one in a very long time, but if you are in the market for, for some DIY paint, I would suggest you get it now before the price incre increase happens. Um, all of the paint and IOD products are on my website at createyourowncozy.com. <sighs> That feels so great to say. Um, my DIY and JRV products are in my booth at Angry Mama's Antiques and Interiors in Cumming, Georgia. My IOD products that I have in stock are up at my booth, Soul Sisters in Dawsonville. And as I get my inventory updated with demand, I will definitely keep that um, stocked up up in the store. <sighs> Guys, this is so exciting. I don't even know how to say it. Like, I'm just excited. I feel um, happy about the bit, the way that my business is going. And um, I hope that you guys got inspired to create some more today. I would love to know what kind of stuff you're creating with this new release and how much fun you are having. If you are new here or have not yet subscribed, please consider subscribing to my channel, hitting that notification bell to all so you get updated every time I upload a new video. Always, I always appreciate a free way to help me is just do a thumbs up on my video and leave a comment that lets YouTube know that you're enjoying my content and it encourages them to share it with other people. And I would love to encourage you guys too. If you have people that you think will enjoy my content, please feel free to share and they can join the Great Young Cozy family. Thank you guys so much for being here. I will see you guys in next week's video. Thank you.